Do you want to look through the questions? Do you? Do you want to look through the questions with me? Come on then. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and as you may have noticed, I am back uploading my videos. Now I think you're all pleased about that because the last one got a lot of views and I am so thankful. So I hope this one does the same and I think it will because it's in keeping with the last. You seem to love the motherhood and the baby stuff. And I realised I've never actually spoke or answered any questions about my journey so far. So today is a, a motherhood, pregnancy, baby questionnaire kind of thing. First question is, I don't know if you can hear your album in the background. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she's just watching some baby TV. Basically, today I need to tell you four star questions. I've got filming, a very big appointment, and I've got my period, it's about to come any second because I've got bad cramp. And I've got Alba, and I can't believe how she's not started crying yet. She's just literally sat in her little chair. I've put some black and white TV on for her. She's just watching it, like babbling away to herself, and I just can't, I'm, I'm on edge. Oh, I'm on edge thinking when is, when is she gonna cry? But she hasn't, she's been really good and she's a really good girl, which you'll find out as I answer questions. So, Patty May 89 has said, are you breastfeeding? I think this is common knowledge. I did a video where I'm using milk formula, but no, I'm not breastfeeding. And the reason for that is, you know, I just never felt like I wanted to breastfeed. My mum didn't breastfeed me, or my brother, my nana didn't breastfeed my mum. Like, in our family, I just don't think anyone got breastfed. And I don't know whether it's because we all have the same thoughts about it, but it's just, it's just not for me. I just don't feel drawn to want to breastfeed for so many different reasons because I had a c-section so my milk wouldn't have fully came in then. I want to be able to share the workload with Jake and I want him to be able to feel like he can bond with the baby too. Now I know that I could pump express I mean and then he could do a bottle but it's just that that in turn is then going to really take it out on me I need to go back to work like I've not took any maternity leave it just wasn't for me and I know a lot of a lot of women get judged for doing that and I quite frankly think that if your baby's being fed regardless it's still being fed why why does everyone get so hung up on what it's being fed on do you know what I mean so yeah that is the answer about the breastfeeding Next question. Underscore M1318 has said, how do you handle sleep deprivation? My baby's four weeks old and I'm struggling. We are so incredibly lucky that for some reason, I have been blessed with an absolute angel. And I say this as she's just sat over there, right? Completely entertaining herself, just like, I mean, Angus, what is she even doing? She's just loving life. I'm even in shock at this because we did have a day when she was crying quite a lot when I was at work and I could, didn't have any childcare. And she was crying quite a lot, but she's just been absolutely perfect. She, I've been blessed with an angel baby who is the best sleeper you have ever known. I was, I was clueless when I had Alba. Like, I didn't know about routines. And I didn't know anything about being baby-led either. I didn't know that there was two different ways of doing things. And I certainly didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. But when I was in hospital, and obviously, the time that she was born, Alba was born at 1 p.m. Well, just, no, she was born at 1.05. Yeah, so she had her first bottle at like, half one-ish when we were in the recovery room. After that, she just fell asleep. Obviously, she's a newborn, that's all they do. And the nurse came in and the nurses and midwives were absolutely amazing. And they were like, so what will happen now? We kept giving loads of advice. Like, it's, she'll sleep now. Newborns are just very sleepy. They'll only wake for the nappy being changed for a feed if they're in like any pain, if they need winding, if they need if they're too hot, if they're too cold, and all that jazz. She was like, so never let the baby go any longer than like three, three and a half, four at the max hours without a feed because like she could sleep, she could just keep sleeping. 
and she was like, so always wake the baby up to be fed. And I was like, right, okay, okay. Obviously I was just panicking because I was the first time mom, me and Jake didn't have a clue what we were doing. So we were just in our hotel room, I mean hospital room, and we were like, right, okay, so, so what do we do? So we were like, right, so she had a feed at, remember looking at, we were looking at our watches, we're like, she had a feed at half one, she just went fast asleep. So now we'll just wake her up in like three and a half hours. So we sat there literally just staring <laughs> at Alba, like, and she couldn't wake up. And she was so cute, she was just like, so cute and peaceful and all swaddled up. And it went half one, half two, half three, half four. It got to half four and we literally wanted to wake up for three hours, as you do, because we just wanted to spend time with that. So we were like, let's wake her up and feed her now. So then we woke her up, fed her at half four, and then burped her. And I remember Jake did the first burp because I was too frightened. Like, I was just didn't want to hurt her or I didn't, I was so scared about burp and I just didn't think I'd be very good at it. So then he burped her and then she just fell straight back to sleep in his arms and we were like, oh, so this is just what happens. So then we just let her sleep again. And then we woke her up again at like three and a half hours this time. And then we just kept on doing that. And then we, we randomly just got ourselves into this amazing routine of us literally sleeping three to four hours between each feed. And that was like for the first month. Well, it, to be honest, it still goes on now, but she's a lot, she's obviously a lot more awake now. So she doesn't sleep for the full time in between feeds. She's like awake and we'll do tummy time or we'll have a little play about. But like, we're still on the routine of the scheduled feeding times because, not because we chose that, because that's just how it worked out. So sleep deprivation, thankfully, hasn't been a thing because our last feed is at half 11, 12, depending on the day. Sometimes it goes a bit later, sometimes it goes a bit earlier. And from that, we always in bed really by like midnight and then she'll literally wake up at like 4.30 earliest. That's if she wakes up herself. And that's like four and a half hours sleep. And then she, then we have one feed and she goes back to bed and we all go back to bed until about eight. So technically, we've had like eight hours sleep. Like she's not, she, and I just can't believe it. And even saying this is crazy <laughs> because I'm like, we are so lucky. Me, mum and dad are like, every hour Nathaniel was up, we had to get him in the car in the middle of the night, drive around the street to try and get him back to sleep. But we don't have to do that. And even now, so at, I think it was at seven weeks, she just decided, we were told by our um, midwives who came around to see us, if she does want to sleep a little bit longer through the night, you can let her, you don't have to wake her up like every four hours if it's during the night. Just make sure she's getting, doing that during the day. She's like, sometimes she sleeps till 5, 30, 6 now. It just depends. So we don't wake her up, we just, we wait for her to wake us up now, now in the night and it's always 4.30 or 6. Just depends. But anyone who's watching this who physically hates us now because I just know how much sleep deprivation is awful because my mum and dad went through it with my little brother and obviously I was like 16 so I was there to witness it firsthand. Don't worry about it because I do want to have another baby and you don't get two the same. So don't worry, I will get hit with the sleep deprivation next time. There's no way I'd be this lucky twice. So next question. This is a good one. Heather uh, underscore a uh, Ghoul has, has said, would you like a be like a boy baby? <laughs> would you like a boy baby? So obviously it would be so nice to have one of each. And I would love to have a boy, right, at some point, but I'm kind of obsessed with girls. Like I've got this obsession, and now the obsession is so hardcore in my head because Alba is just so perfect and I love her so much and we're gonna be best friends for the rest of our lives. We're gonna go and get our nails done together, manicures, pedicures, we'll get our hair done together. We'll go on holidays, shopping trips, like everything we're gonna do together. I now only wanna have girls <laughs> and I've chose my next two girls' names. So that is three girls I have and then I'll have the boy. That's four babies, I understand, but I think I can do it. So the answer to that question is, I would like to have a boy, but I'd just like to have loads of girls first. The boy is the last option. <sighs> Jake really wants a boy though, but I'm being selfish. I can't help it. <laughs> Jake's so angry. Jake's like, no, it needs to be a boy next. I'm like, no, 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 it's gonna be another girl. I know the name. Right, so Annie Craven, planned C-section reason. 
So I have explained this, but obviously there's a lot of people who miss things when I say things. So I had an ectopic pregnancy, um, which was like obviously really traumatic. I nearly died. Um, if it had been left any longer, I wouldn't be here right now. I was rushed to the hospital because I was fitting and convulsing on the floor. Um, I had to be carried to the scan room to be scanned because I was, I was totally unconscious. It was really bad. So I kind of have really, well, I kind of have a little bit of post-traumatic stress because like I'm terrified of any complications happening because I've been down the road where there's been complications and it is scary. It is really, really scary. Now that I'm not say, I'm not saying that there's no complications when you have a C-section, but there's a lot less than having a natural birth. And I'm not knocking a natural birth in the slightest because do you know what? I would would one day like to experience one but with my first child and after finding out I was pregnant after not thinking that I could get pregnant this was really really important it was that everything went right and I wanted to know every single step of the way I didn't want any nasty surprises I didn't want any panic I just didn't want the unknown I did not want the unknown so I chose to have a c-section with the gynecologist who saved my life and my doctor who also recommended that that be the path I take now if I already wanted to do it and I've got a medical professional saying to do that too it's just a no-brainer for me but I'm not I'm not ruling out a natural birth because I mean it is a beautiful thing to experience if it goes right for you I've heard a lot of horror stories and in a lot of my close friends it hasn't gone right for them but I'm not ruling it out and you know I want to have Alba three girls one boy that's four kids I'm sure I can fit a natural birth in there somewhere and you can have a natural birth after a c-section it's been done Carly underscore Maria one said, how did the C-section go always been a fear of mine? So that's so strange because natural birth has always been a fear of mine. The C-section, I was not scared of at all. It was just the, getting the cannula in my hand and I don't know whether anyone's the same. Let us know in the comments. I get freaked out about having that needle in my hand. It's thin skin, you're moving your hand a lot. You, you can see it like I don't like needles in veins and stuff as it is, it freaks us out. But the C-section was the most calming, beautiful experience I've ever been through. And because it was planned, because everything was calm, there was no panic, everyone knew what was happening. We had like the anaesthetist and another person, I think it was the nurse, had both of our phones and got so many videos and so many photos of the whole experience. And it was, it is magical. Me and Jake sometimes will sit and just we'll both be like, shall we look through the photos again? And we'll go to the beginning. We've got so many, you wouldn't believe. There are literally about 150 photos and videos. We've got the moment um, she comes out, we've got Jay cutting the cord. It was absolutely the best experience of my life. I'd go back and I'd do it all again in a heartbeat tomorrow, if I could, but you, you're not really meant to. Um, it was absolutely magical. I had a playlist on. Um, that everyone was so lovely. The nurses, the doctors, I knew them all on first name basis. Obviously my doctor was the one who saved my life. So the fact that he then brought me baby into the world was just so special, so special and so uh, emotional. But honestly, it was amazing. It was so, so amazing. I honestly loved it. And you've got to remember though, mine wasn't an emergency one. So people have different opinions of an emergency one, whereas mine was planned. So. I think they can be quite different, but no, my experience was beautiful. I, honestly, I look back at it with very fond memories. Come on, my little baby. Oh, no. Did you need a little burp? Do you want to look through the questions with Mammy? Oh, sorry, baby. Do you want to look through the questions? Do you? Do you want to look through the questions with me? Come on, then. Let's have a look, you can pick one. You can pick a little question. Right, so, oh, you're falling asleep. She likes to look over the shoulder. Right, so this question is, how do you, are you getting on running a business and being a new mum? Oh, you're making your little noises. Oh, she's burping again. Oh, that was from Harley Summer 87. Uh, oh, 
So I have obviously got two businesses as well as multiple other jobs <laughs> to do. And to be honest, I've been coping. I haven't took no maternity leave, but I've got to say, like, I love what I do. And it's so fun and, well, don't get us wrong, sometimes the business side of things can be very, very stressful. But um, but, I, but I genuinely love everything I do, so that's why I didn't take any time off. And I have such a fun work buddy who joins me, don't you? You join me, my little girl. And she comes along and she, she whinges and she does poo explosions, but she makes everything so much better. So I've been finding it fine so far, but I think that's probably because I've got such a good little girl. And then I think, guys, that has to be the end of the question and answers because Alba would like to um, be with me now. And I'm gonna go and give her a little tummy time and a little head stroke and get her off to sleep. So goodbye from me and Alba. Alba, you, can you say goodbye to everyone, please? Can you say goodbye, everyone? Love you all. Oh, my tiny girl. Oh, yes, you're tired. You're a tired girl. Right, she's going to sleep now. Anyways, thank you so much, guys, for watching my YouTube channel. Comment if you would like us to do a longer question and answers when Jake's around to look after Alpha. <laughs> and also like this video and subscribe to my channel.